Okay, here we are for round three. Um, we are going to be on the play, and this hand is just fine. Let's see if our opponent is here. Okay. All right, so our opponent has a call to the grave, an overrun, a doom blade, a ring flesh, a uh, vampire outcast, a troll hide. Um, you know, so some nice tricks here. Uh, two grave diggers. Here we are going to run out with the arsonist just because we don't know for sure if we're going to draw planes, and we want the for sure play. Also saw a jade mage, which is a pretty nice combo, like with the um, call of the grave. So hopefully here, if he does play the uh, Jade Mage, we'll be ready for it. Um, Fortunately, with two Grave Diggers, he's going to have a lot of recursion effects. Don't think at this point it's really um, necessary for us to kill the Tormented Soul. Um, I'm just going to want to save our removal. I mean, like, it's possibly want to kill it because of the um, Vampire Outcast, but we have the Chandra's Outrage, so I'm not too worried about it. Still just bashing in. Hopefully we can get our Titan online in this game. Should be great. Okay, there's the Swiftwood boot, so he's got a pretty big hexproof theme. Now he's probably happy to trade the Arsonist for the uh, Glade Cover Scout. Which we really are as well. Um, we don't want to have, you know, get too many creatures on the ground just because, you know, we don't want to lose to overrun. I mean, he still needs two more green, but I think we just want to keep pushing. Alternatively, we could just attack with the uh, the warhorse here and leave the arsonist back in case he plays another creature and then is able to haste it. That way, we can block and use our arsonist to kill the tormented soul. So. I think actually we just attack with Warhorse here, since we don't have a creature to drop. We don't want to have to use our Chandras or the Incinerate unless we actually have to. Like if you didn't play Swiftwood Boots here, we definitely would be attacking with both. Most likely. Okay, now I'm a little bit confused what his plays are. I think we're still fine just uh just bashing in. Probably holding some combination of ring flesh or doom blade.
Hopefully we can get him to play a big creature here, attempt to equip it with Swiftfoot Boots, then kill it in response with Chandra's. Like Vampire Outcasts, maybe? Guess not. Okay. I mean, now we're happy to bash with both. I mean, he might have the... You know, I mean, he could potentially have, like, Doomblade here, but, you know, I, I don't think that we want to hold back now because we're going to be up ahead on life. And even if he kills our guy and then manages to um, play like a big threat and then give it haste, yeah, I still think we're still just bashing. Like if he doesn't have Doomblade here, he's in pretty rough shape. There's a very real chance we could just burn him out. I mean, like, yeah, if he doesn't kill our tri Titan this turn, it's over. Okay, so he is bashing in. Um, potential cards he could have here, like he could play Call to the Grave, um, from what we've seen, or I guess Rhino, which is fine. So I mean, now we just bash in with both, hit him for five, incinerate for the win. We don't even have to show him the fling. There's no reason to. Okay, and that should be game. Okay, so going into game two, what do we want to take out? Um, let's see, he's green-black. We saw like Rhino, Overrun, Doomblade, Ring Flesh, Outcasts, Trollhide, Call to the Grave, two Grave Diggers. Mighty Leap might not be the worst plan here. I mean, you know, it's good to get over his uh, his ground defense. We could also run, let's see, what else? Didn't see any artifacts. Um, Tectonic Rift may also not be the, the worst plan. Um, just because, you know, I mean, it'll give us a chance to just get through on the ground with all of our guys. We have a few guys in the air already, so I'm not... I don't think it's super necessary. Like, if we had, you know, the majority of our creatures on the ground, that might be better. Um, do we have any cards that are weak against him? Let's see. Fling, pacifism, no... Like, I think we're actually pretty well set up against him. Yeah, I think we're just going to stay with what we have. Let's 
So, lots of nice cards here, but we are definitely not keeping this hand. We need at least two land. Oof. Okay, so he is playing last. Yuck. I think we have to go to five. Like, I mean, well, let's see. If we stay at six, if we draw a land, we could potentially just, you know, like, run this game. Um, not worry so much about these two cards. I, we probably will not be able to play them. If we go to five, we have a better chance of drawing another land. However, then all of his cards become just more powerful, especially Call of the Grave. Like we still want to have early pressure. Um, problem is we don't have any white sources. We have a turn one play, and that's it. I think, I think we have to go to five here. Like if we didn't have like these super late cards, we could maybe justify staying at six. But I, I think it's, there's too many things that have to happen. You know, we have to draw lands. They have to be planes. I think it's just too greedy. Yuck. I mean, this hand is pretty terrible, but we have to run it. We just hope to draw planes in there somewhere, and hope he has a pretty slow draw. Yeah. I mean, that last hand was, was questionable. I mean, we could potentially have drawn out of that, but I think that the chances of drawing out of that hand were, are not the best. I mean, we, we were 8 and 8, so we we had like a 1 in 4 chance of drawing a planes, and if we didn't draw, we just lost. So. I mean, this this hand is still bad, don't get me wrong. Okay. Really need to draw plans here soon. This point just. Ugh. Not even bashing in because we don't want him to attack with his 2 2. Sitting back, dropping Lava Mancer. So now there's so many cards you could play that are just so unfortunate for us. And Troll Hide is pretty good there. Um, luckily, oh, he's got the two mana open, unfortunately, to regenerate. Whew, okay. Well. I think at this point we just we bash with arsonist get in there with and then um, play the veteran yeah he gets to play if he wants to trade archmage with uh, veteran I think that's okay As long as he keeps that mana open, I mean, we're just in trouble. Oh, let's see, so we go to 13, we bash in for 4. Hmm. I think we actually trade here, yeah. So building up our graveyard is not the worst for Lava Mancer. And, like, we want to slow the beats off that. Okay, so this is actually amazing. It's exactly what we're looking for. 
bashing in with both, playing Stormfront Pegasus. We don't want to incinerate it this turn just because um, like he could draw like Titanic Growth or something like that and we just want to get rid of it. Yep, go ahead and regenerate it. See if I care. Exactly what we needed there. So now we've got Lava Mancer online. Hopefully, we can put that to some good use. Still got a fair amount of gas. Call to the grave. Okay. That is problematic. Um, yuck. All right, so now we're definitely not playing creatures, just bashing in. We want to be able to set up a turn where we're, you know, call the grave goes away. Um, hopefully can do that. Like here we've just got Lava Mancer if he plays a creature. Yuck. What is going on here? Soren's Vengeance. Okay. Yep, that's pretty good. Alright, so because of the way this is set up, let's see, at the beginning of the end step, there are no creatures in the battlefield. All right, I think what ends up happening is we have to shoot our own creature. Like, so with the sacrifice on the stack, we've got to kill our own creature in order to get rid of Call the Grave. Um, it sucks, but... I think that's how we have to do it. <coughs> yeah, it's just unfortunate, but not much we can do about it. So we shoot it now and then just lose our guy. Okay, so... What we do is we end up shooting that, and then on our upkeep, we shoot him and then lose our guy. Just get the extra damage in. Okay. Now we just play the land. Pat, or we actually don't have to play the land. Um, like if he has Mind Rot, he just gets us. I think we hold off on the land here. Okay, we get rid of Call of the Grave. Okay, Garrick's Companion. And a Sacred Wolf. Nice. So maybe we should have played the land there, um, just so we could use the Chandra's Rage. Uh, it's hard to say. Um, we probably should have known he was going to be holding creatures. So I think here we have to... Kill the companion, and then next turn hopefully block the wolf. Go to two. Yeah, that was probably a misplay because we, we probably should have assumed he was holding creatures. If he has another creature here, we just lose. Luckily, we top deck pretty well though. 
mean, yeah, we can't kill his Sacred Wolf, but I mean, he can certainly block pretty well. If he has Doomblade here, I mean, that's it, but, you know, it would be anyways. Might have Acidic Slime, okay. Sure. So now we can just like drop two creatures, nuke the acidic slime, bash in, and then like pump once. You could even say like, I think we just say soldier here just because we want to hedge. Yeah. And we probably should have played the automaton first in case he has ring flesh, so. I mean, he didn't there, but he could have. What is this? Good lord, what is this? Overrun? No. Rune Scarred Demon. Okay. That's a beating. Whew. This guy is just firing on all cylinders here. Um we pretty much need to like top deck a it may not even matter. I mean, he might just have some sort of way to life like us out. Or life drain us out. That was definitely a pretty hefty top deck there. Okay, so what is our play here? We bash with everybody. Like, he has to block Inferno Titan here. Like, if we push him to six. These guys bash in. He goes to one. Like we, we, I mean, we can't not attack. We have to attack here. If we attack with this guy, put three damage here. He can't block the vanguard, but he can block the automaton. Like this guy blocks here. This guy goes through. He goes to six. <sighs> I think we're just dead here, unfortunately. Um, I'm trying to think of any permutation where this works out to our advantage. Because the hex proof, I think we are just dead. So we do six, three to the dome, he goes to six, block, block, and that's game. We put three on him. Hmm. Any way we can trick him into playing differently? I don't think so. I think we are just dead here. I think we just put three points on him just because... I mean, it really doesn't matter. We, we, we've already lost at this point, unless he plays, you know, the incorrect play. I mean, like, now he just, like, blocks here, lets these two through, and we lose. Or, like, he blocks here, and we still lose. As long as he doesn't block Vanguard or Inferno Titan, we lose.
Okay, so we may depends on what he like it depends on what he tutored for, really. If he tutored for something insane, we could still lose. All right, I'm pretty mystified at what's going on here, but I suppose we'll find out. Ring flesh. Sure. So unless he draws well here, I think we might have a chance at just pulling this out. Sure. Double top deck will do it. Okay, so he's a Rose Guard Demon and an Overrun. Um, oh, other cards we could use here potentially. Hmm. I think we're actually just fine. I think we just try to make it happen. Actually, I think we bring in Circle of Flam, now that I think about it. I mean, he's got some 1-1s. One -ones. Well, do we bother? Hmm. Nah, I guess not. Like he, I mean, he has the, the Jade Mage, but I think we can kill it. We could potentially bring in Circle of Flame. Alright, so here we are. We are definitely on the play. Hand looks great. Go ahead and lead out with the planes in case we get the turn to Warhorse. And he's got the signature Tormented Soul. So hopefully we can get a chance to hit him with the Pegasus and set up the uh, Blood Ogre. He may just block here to be unfortunate, but not too much we can do about that. Okay, so here just bashing in. Hopefully we get through. And he's got the gravedigger shenanigans going on. Hopefully we do not see a call to the grave. That would be pretty unfortunate. Um, here we're just bashing in. If he tries to double block, we just run the incinerate. Just to keep bashing. Looks like he is going to go for it. Alright, so now we just need a, another mana, hopefully like a red mana at some point.
I guess he's just racing. Vampire Outcasts, yuck. Okay, so we really need a red mana here. Oh, and we don't have a chance to... Hmm, that's trouble. Okay. A little too late there. Um, okay, so we can drop Peregrine Griffin and stay back on defense. Um, alternatively, let's see, what's our play? I think we just drop Griffin here. I think that's the best play we've got. So the next turn, if we draw land, we can fling Chandra's Rage into turn the next turn Lava Axe for the win. I think that's got to be our play. Like if he has Ring Flesh, he can just blow us out here, unfortunately. Whew. Um, let's see. Actually, he's at 8. So, the play here is to wait for him to attack, block um, before damage, fling our guy at his head, get him to five on our turn lava axe. That's the play. Okay. He has like the ring flesh and response is pretty rough, but I think that's got to be the play. Or if he doesn't even bother, then we just yeah take three and wait for end of turn. Okay. So now we can just Chandra's Outrage. So we get him to six now. We need to flame. Now we just get there with our Lava Axe, and that should do it. Okay, and that is the match. We will see you for the final round.